Forensic Biology Screening Workshop Case Studies. The following case studies will be looked at. A blood case, which is a homicide, a sexual assault case involving a juvenile, and a burglary. Case study number one, a scenario. The 37-year-old male victim was found dead in his home. The victim was found in the bedroom. The victim was stabbed. A broken window is the point of entry, and there is no evidence of a sex crime. The evidence sent in for analysis is as follows. A knife from the outside of the back door, a swab of red-brown stains at the point of entry, fingernail scrapings from the victim, the victim's clothing, swabs from red-brown staining throughout the house. What questions would you have for the detective on the case prior to working on the evidence? What is the best evidence? How would you screen? First, the fingernail scrapings, followed by the knife, the swab from the broken window, and then the victim's shirt. And what might be the problems with screening the victim's clothes? The suspect may or may not be bleeding. Since the victim was stabbed, a lot of the victim's blood and possibly a little of the suspect's blood may be on the victim's clothing. Stain selection is key when you have numerous positive areas to send on for DNA testing. In case study number one, you have the victim's shirt which has several stains and on the backside wearing there are several stains. If this is the victim's shirt from case study number one, the majority of the blood would be expected to have come from the victim. Are there any stains on hair that you would think may have come from the suspect? Look for stains that have a different morphology or look from the majority of the other stains. The results from case study number one are that the shirt is positive for Casamaya, the knife also positive for Casamaya, the swab from the window was negative, and the fingernail scrapings were swabbed for DNA. Based on the report guidelines given previously, how should you report your results on the shirt, the knife, the swab from outside the window, and the fingernail scrapings? Case study number two. Here is the scenario. A five-year-old girl complains of possible sexual assault by a male babysitter. The parents bring her to the hospital within three hours of the possible attack. What questions would you have for the detective? Upon further information from the detective, it was revealed that vaginal penetration did occur, but it is unknown if it was by the penis or digital. The breasts were touched and possibly licked. The evidence collected is as followed. Vaginal swabs, breast swabs, oral swabs, panties, shirt, and pants. What would you test first? How would you screen the vaginal swabs, breast swabs, oral swabs, panties, shirt, and pants? Here are the results from your testing. On the vaginal swabs, they were found to be AP negative, micro negative, and amylase positive. The breast swabs were found to be amylase negative. The oral swabs were AP negative and micro negative. The panties were AP negative and the amylase results were inconclusive. The shirt was also AP negative. The pants were AP positive, micro negative, and P30 positive. Based on this information, how would you report your results on the vaginal swabs, breast swabs, oral swabs, panties, shirt, and pants? Case study number three, the scenario. A jewelry store was broken into. The glass door was broken and that is the point of entry. The clerk was hit with the butt of a gun and remembers the suspect wearing gloves, a ski mask, and a baseball cap. The evidence collected for analysis are as follows. One white cotton glove, one black ski mask, one baseball cap, and a swab of red-brown stain at the point of entry. What questions would you have for the detective? Now, what tests would you perform on the glove, ski mask, baseball cap, and swab? Based on the reporting guidelines, how would you report your results on the glove, ski mask, baseball cap, and swab? 